Hey y'all, I'm Shauna. Welcome in or welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reacting to Sephora hauls and we have quite a mixed bag of hauls here. We have some that are your typical traditional Sephora haul. We also have some ones that I actually like, which may surprise you. And then some more controversial ones. I kind of like for a change to be like, yes, I like this go off. And so it's a mixed bag. There are two main reasons why I'm making this video. The first is because people have asked me like, hey, Shauna, can you talk about, you know, shopping hauls and things like that? And so this is one of my answers to that. Perhaps in the future, we can talk more about the like psychology of hauls and shopping and things like that, which we will do a little bit today, but uh, not the kind of same as like these mini dives I've done. And then number two is that back in the day, I used to love watching Sephora hauls. I lived for it. I saw them as aspirational and I wanted to shop like that. So this is in part for my past self and also for many of y'all who, who've also been really avid makeup consumers. I hope that uh, you enjoy this video. I really wish that I saw content like this online that is being critical of overconsumption and hyperconsumption online. And that's mostly what we're doing in this video. Like, and help you as a viewer think more critically about, about what you're seeing online and how that might affect your purchasing. But in this specific video, because we have a mixed bag, that's not going to be all we're doing. We have a lot to talk about today, so I want to get into it. And I first want to react to or talk about more like this video titled $700 Sephora haul. $700 Sephora haul. Clearly have a problem. This is a $100 foundation. Now I love wasting my money, but $100 for a foundation is too much for me. And this is like number one rated on Sephora, so I really, really hope this lives up to the hype. Next, we have the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. I have heard such good things about this, especially for spot concealing. Especially if you have acne, I've heard this is really good for covering up pimples. I'm so excited for this. I got the one size pink powder. I find that a lot of pink powders are just made for like white skin tones and they're super ashy. So I really wanted to try this one out because it's specifically made for people of color. I got three things from Rare Beauty, which I was not expecting. I got this bronzer stick. Everyone talks about this and it just looks so creamy and nice. Then I got this mini blush in the shade Hope. And the reason I got this mini is first of all, it's so cute and I can never finish a full size. So I feel like this is more like efficient. And then I got another blush, but this is their cream blushes, which I also heard really good stuff about. This is such a pretty shade. Look, look at how pretty this shade is. Like, I feel like it goes with my hair. Like, I need this. Rare Beauty just, like, never disappoints. Like, all their products are so good. And then I got this Prada perfume, and this smells heavenly. I smelled this in store, and it just smelled so good. I had to get the biggest size. Look at how cute the packaging is. This is, this is like my new like everyday scent. I also got the Sephora setting spray. This is supposed to be a dupe for Urban Decay, so I'm going to test this out and see. Now we have all the lip products. I bought this Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. I already use this like every day. I just needed to restock. And then I bought this Patrick Ta lip gloss. Again, seen on TikTok and I have to try it. This is everywhere. Like everyone and their mom has it and I haven't tried it. It's the Fenty Heat Cherry. And I feel like my hair is red so I should get like a red lip and Fenty glosses never disappoint. And then I bought this light pink gloss from Sephora. This is the perfect color if you have like a dark lip liner and put this in the middle. OMG. This TikTok uses a really popular hook uh, that still exists today on TikTok and YouTube is to flaunt the monetary value of the haul in the title. $700 Sephora haul, $1,000 Sephora haul. Gets people clicking in because people really like to watch these massive hauls. And I think there is a bit of living vicariously through the person. And I saw so many of these when I was researching. I think the highest I had seen or I saw was $1,500 but just so many with the monetary value. Seeing so many hauls titled with these really large dollar amounts, I think gives the impression that spending this much money this often is normal. And I do have to tell you, like maybe you do need to hear this, but it's not normal. It's not normal to casually drop $700 on a Friday night. It's not normal. 
It might be normal for beauty gurus and people who are making money online because they are, for better or worse, buying stuff to make content out off of, but you're not. This is not your life. This is not your reality. You're not making content online. You're not getting tax write-offs. It becomes kind of crazy when we compare our lives to the people that we're seeing online or we feel influenced or compelled to shop like them because we covet their life where we see how they're living, how much they're shopping, how much they're buying as ideals and goals. And because we don't really know all that much about who we're watching in most cases or what their financial situations are like, this person, she could be coming from a rich family and she could just literally have thousands of dollars to waste, or she could be racking up tons of consumer debt or somewhere in the middle, and we just have no idea. And then we also go and compare our lives to theirs. One thing that also kind of gets me about this video is using this language of I'm broke now, or like it kind of gives the vibes of like shopping addiction is quirky, retail therapy is quirky. No. I love to waste my money. Another thing that she said, let's go waste all of our money. Shopping addiction is quirky. And the opening line of this video is clearly I have a problem. Ha ha, I spent a thousand dollars at Sephora. Oops. I think it's just ultimately a way to attempt to let, be self-aware or communicate to their audience. I know that I'm spending a lot of money, but also like justify how much they've spent. As a genre, I don't typically love hauls. And the main reason why I don't like hauls, and most especially when they happen on TikTok, because TikTok, there is an even shorter window of time. So you can't actually talk about the products all that much, especially when you buy a ton of stuff, is that hauls are not meant to educate or provide information or help you purchase in a smarter way, you know, to provide you with information to help you make buying choices. Hauls are quite often a flex, a way for somebody to show their wealth, how much they got, or their excitement for their purchases. You might say, Shauna, that's the point of this video. They're not meant to educate and inform. That's exactly why I don't like them is because when you have somebody talking excitedly about products and they are talking about them in a capacity and we'll see later some people don't even talk during their hauls, and talk about things in such shallow ways. And I'm, I'm not calling her shallow. I'm saying that the depth of knowledge we could ever provide on products we've never used is shallow. Why are we watching them? This is a serious question. It's like the enjoyment of the thing. We like people shopping, or we also want to shop. Their ability to influence us to shop like that or to influence us to shop is a huge part of the draw and why I don't like them. And when we actually listen to what she's saying in this video, we have a lot of the same type of rhetoric applied across products. It was so popular, I have to try. Everybody is trying it or everybody's using it. I want to try it. This product is so hype. There's a lot of, I've seen this in some capacity being used online. I want to try it too. This is a completely normal way to think about makeup, or at least I should say it's normal when you watch a lot of hauls. And this is a practice that I took on myself. I bought a lot of stuff because I saw other people online use it or show it or try it. And so I wanted to too. What I learned personally is that I bought a lot of random crap that did not meet my own personal tastes when I did this. I would use that as a justification to try stuff for the sake of trying it. When you buy stuff because it's popular online and that is like 90 or 100% of the reason for why you're buying stuff, what happens is that no other critical thinking is applied, right? You're not thinking about anything more than the initial trying moment. You're not thinking about longevity. Will you use it up? Do you have the capacity to use it up? Do you have the desire to use it up? Like, could I see myself owning this for three years? And she's also using the language of, I need this at least once in this product or in this video. She said, and I quote, such a pretty shade, it goes with my hair, I need this. And then she also talked about the Patrick Tao lip gloss, seeing it on TikTok, so she 
has to try it. You watch enough TikTok or beauty YouTube and you hear people talking about their wants as if they are needs. This is how your own wants and needs could be blurred. Neither of these things are needs. And I bet you if she like went and thought about it, she would probably agree. I don't want to put words in her mouth, but this kind of language is actually so normal. I do say this myself sometimes. Like I still catch myself saying it because that's part of how we justify buying stuff to ourselves. And also because it's part of the, like the zeitgeist, I don't think nomenclature is the right word, but part of how we, the rhetoric. I also, last thing I wanna touch on is the rare beauty stuff where she said, I wasn't expecting to buy this and I bought three. That's not normal either. When we buy stuff, it shouldn't be a surprise. The next video we're gonna watch is called No Budget Sephora Haul. This has 4.1 million views very popular the previous video had about 1.2 million views i think majority of the videos if not all of them except one have over a million views so we're watching stuff that's incredibly popular so let's watch this now own music over this because they use copyrighted music and it's actually kind of sad sounding to me like this is a birthday haul and the music just seems so melancholy people have estimated in the comments that the creator has spent over nine hundred dollars the like i think most liked or the take that seems to be the most accurate is nine hundred and thirty six dollars on her haul which is a ton of money to drop at Sephora at one time. I do kind of appreciate that she didn't like flex her bill, like, hi, I spent a thousand dollars. And that reflects, I think, the overall perspective of this video. It's not how much she spent, it's that she could go into Sephora and she could just buy whatever she wanted because she made it. The caption says, dreams really do come true, which is why I'm saying that I think that she's viewing this as the symbol that she made it. When I read the comments of this video, many people hold the same belief as her. People aspire to be able to consume like this. And I think that's the ultimate impact of a video like this. I really hope she had a great birthday and I truly don't want to shit on another person's success. Like if you can afford to do this and not have a you know, negative financial repercussions and it doesn't like have a, a dent in your wallet, that's great. It's great that you are financially secure. That is an absolutely wonderful thing. And it's something that I wish wasn't a privilege and I wish that more people had. However, with that said, with being financially secure, we've also turned financial security into more than financial security and a flex of overconsumption. I make so much money, I can spend whatever I want. She's encouraging people, or this video, in my opinion, encourages people to view this as aspirational. I want to grow up one day, or I want to make so much money one day that I can buy whatever I want in whatever quantity that I want. Now, as somebody who has previously overconsumed makeup, I can tell you that I put a, a stop to that four years ago. And I still own makeup from four years ago that I'm still trying to work through to this day. I also see how long it has taken me to use up makeup. If you're somebody who works away from home or wears makeup five days a week, you're probably going to go through makeup much faster than myself. But when people watch these videos, they're watching it from their own perspective and their own life. And my perspective is it would take me years 
to work through all of this makeup. And that's the only thing I can think of when I see this makeup is where am I going to put it? Where am I going to store it? Like I'm going to now need to buy new storage because no way all of that is fitting into what I have. I'm literally going to need a storage device of some kind to store all of this makeup and bag stock. And now I'm going to have to maintain it. I'm now I'm going to have to work my way through using what is years worth of product. This is obviously not what the creator is thinking about when she's making this purchase or when she's putting it online. And that's also kind of the point. She's not actually thinking about what she's buying beyond the initial purchase, the initial try, and whatever she wants at this moment. We kind of talked about the buying to try in the previous, so I'm not going to, you know, hang on it uh, too much right now. And shopping like this is now so overwhelming to me because I think about the lo the logistics of stuff and the actual process of using it up. And this just gives me anxiety personally. And I just want to, you know, sit on a point for just a little bit longer that you don't live this creator's life. You live your life with your own finances. Do not let this TikTok's aestheticization and glamorization of overconsumption influence you to shop like this because your results aren't going to be like hers or how it impacts you financially is going to be different than hers. The last thing I want to talk about is a comment. And it says, everyone's talking about the price, but I'm trying to figure out how happy she must be. And the creator responded, very. She might be saying like, yes, she's happy with her new purchases. Like she likes the stuff that she bought. But I think this can also be viewed as buying new stuff has made her happy. And that was the kind of the first thing that I thought of. And if that's actually the case, that would make me kind of sad. I am somebody who has previously found happiness through stuff. Actually, I wouldn't even qualify it as happiness. I would qualify it as, no, happiness is pleasure. So yes, I would, sorry, I was, took a second there. I'm somebody who previously found happiness via stuff. And let me tell you, that's a pretty shitty place to be to find happiness with stuff and also to validate your identity with stuff. And I really hope that you don't aspire to this. I can say from personal experience, that is a very shallow and hollow place to be. I now want to talk about a video called Mini Sephora Haul, and it has 7 million views. So this is titled Mini Sephora Hall and people in people are kind of torn as to whether she means a small Sephora Hall or like a mini product Sephora Hall. And I kind of feel like she's trolling us a bit because she puts was running low in in her description, but also she features many products. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt and say it's because there's many products, but like, girl knows what she's done. And I don't know if you caught it at the end, but I'm pretty sure the impetus for this video was she went shopping because it was her birthday. She got the birthday gift. And I really feel like she just went on a shopping spree like the other woman in the previous video because it was her birthday. This is like she just wanted to shop because it was her birthday. Kind of why I think she's trolling us is because... Like you don't buy an entire blush range because you're running low. You don't run low on an entire blush range unless you're a makeup artist, which I don't think she is. This is literal years worth of blush. I own those rare beauty blushes. They're so pigmented. And the one 
mini bush is gonna last you for freaking ever, let alone six. And people are influenced by this video because of the aesthetics, and this is just yet another example of aesthetics enticing us to shop like this and buy these specific products. And I do find it very interesting that people are wanting to buy products without ever actually seeing the products in action. She does swatch a couple of things, like she swatches a highlighter and a lip gloss, but the majority of the stuff she doesn't swatch. And so in my opinion, people are watching these videos because they are already like, the, the gates are open. Like they already have this impetus to shop. They want to shop. So they watch these videos, like they're primed to shop, they're looking for reasons to shop, they're looking for inspiration, and they come to videos like this. That was me, 100%, 100%, 100%. And if that's you, you're like you are primed to shop, you want to buy stuff, this might be a trigger for you, or like you're intentionally triggering yourself. If that is you, I would caution against watching this kind of content. And I bring up the aesthetic selling us stuff because we're buying stuff or we're tempted to buy stuff based on aesthetics alone and tapping. Not because of reviews, not because of product efficacy, not because we saw swatches or heard somebody speak about a product, simply because we saw it on a screen. I think that we can do better than that. I think that we are capable of more critical thinking and being more discerning about how we shop. Like when we let our enjoyment of aesthetics influences to buy stuff. I think this is how some people can develop shopping addictions. I'm not saying by watching this video, you're inherently going to develop a shopping addiction, but I think that's how it can start. Or we ride the dopamine roller coaster. You know, you get your dopamine hits by watching these videos and then by putting stuff in your cart and then you check out and then now you feel that low because you like every high there is a low simply because you're not high anymore. And so now you've come down and you need a new purchase to get back on the high. So you watch a video like this and you check out, you're back on the high and then it's this vicious circle. Just like the previous one, we're aestheticizing over consumption, normalizing buying huge quantities of stuff. And I'm gonna put this video on the screen now, but just after she did this haul, she did this, she did this like, mini restocking video and she stocks all of her rare beauty products and i did the math on this it's 353 dollars worth of minis because these are minis they are so deceptive with how expensive they are like they look small cute and then all of a sudden we buy 12 of this stuff if not more and like we've just casually dropped 350 dollars compiling a mini rare beauty collection or attempting to get a fraction of what she has on the screen. I just mean to say this is deceptively expensive and you there's no price tags on this video or her previous video and so you might want to go recreate this and not realize just how expensive this stuff is. Okay we're going to watch this haul now from a creator named Katie Fang. This has 1.5 million views I want you to play to watch this with no context <laughs> because maybe you'll maybe you will see um the double take that i did here we go i had literally the fattest sephora haul of my life like insane basically i was told that there was a few cancer patients in dallas that loved watching my videos and they have a gala coming up tomorrow to raise awareness and i thought on top of a donation i could do a little surprise gift of my favorite sephora stuff probably not going to be a surprise anymore because they might watch this video but this one's for you guys starting off strong i got a bunch of gisu lip oils including the new ones i also got some for myself because i need to try these i got a bunch of flavors got like the passion fruit one the strawberry one and this one's gorgeous this one's watermelon I got a bunch of these Summer Friday lip balms, they're my favorite. And then I got four of these Sol de Janeiro mists, two in the OG 62 and then two in 68, both my favorite scents. I got a bunch of Benetton as well because I feel like these are just so perfect for summer. I got them a few of my favorite um, Benefit cookie highlighters. And I got a bunch of these mini like liquid rare beauty blushes just because I feel like the full size, you can never finish it and there's just so much pigment in these. Oh, and 
bronzy. I did not know I bought so much stuff. I got three bronzy drops because you can't go wrong with these. I got some of the new Rare Beauty blushes. These are the powder ones and they're stunning, like my favorite. And then on top of that, I have a bunch of PR from like Say, Fenty that I'll obviously include in this box. But those are just the stuff that I bought for this. So I started watching this video and at first I was going to be like, girl, what are you doing? I shut my mouth so quick. <laughs> Miss Katie Fang, I love this. I genuinely believe that she kind of shopped for these women like she was shopping for herself, like buying products that she loved or she would want to try popular products. I know I just critiqued that previously, but this is a much different context in my opinion. This is a Sephora haul I can get behind and buying stuff for women who are absolutely deserving, who ha are going through like beyond what I can imagine. And the American healthcare system is insane. And I can only imagine just the ex the expenses that folks could potentially be incurring going through cancer treatment. I just, I'm like, give these women everything. So I wanted to um, show that before we uh, continue. Now we're getting into the section where minors are involved. I am going to be blurring the faces and the channel names of, of these accounts. If you know who they are, please keep it to yourself. And I am showing this to have a discussion or different discussions about child influencers. And that's why I'm going to be talking about it. And I, I have thought about making a child influencer video. I have held off so long because one of the reasons why I don't think children belong online is because they can't consent to it. And we have children, two of them are around six or seven in this video. In my opinion, like you, you can't fully grasp the complexities of being online at six or seven. So I don't, I wouldn't consider them being able to consent to being influencers online or, you know, coming online. And so if somebody can't consent to being online, I don't know how I personally feel about talking about them, uh, even if they are, are blurred out. I have mixed opinions about that. Um, so this is kind of like a, a test, a test run, uh, if you will. So the first one we're going to watch uses the name of the child, but it's like X is Sephora Hall. So it'd be Sean is Sephora Hall. I do want to give a little bit of a context for this. The mom sets up the shot. I think you'll, I think I'll be able to show it uh, in the video. The mom sets up the shot. She's in the shot and then she leaves to let the girl do the Sephora Hall. At the time of filming, she is seven years old. So here we go. Sephora haul. I can't wait to do it like, ah! First up, my Cora moisturizer. Let's unbox this puppy. <sighs> OMG. <gasps> Look how pretty this looks. Ah! Look how pretty Sparkle is. Time to open. Look how smooth this is. This smells just like a candle. Perfect. Moving on. Yes, this is my favorite. Glow recipe. I love glow recipe. Perfect for my skin. This is a cleanser and I love it. And people know my favorite color is purple. I promise I'm gonna do a get ready with me with this. Next, this is perfect for the beach. It's a sunscreen for your lips. Keep them nice and moisturized. We don't want chapped lips. Wow. Wow, it looks like lipstick, see? Next please, Real Beauty Blush. Thank you, Selena Gomez. Look how pretty this looks. Cheek. Oh, oh. <laughs> Peace out, sis. You're not going to be able to see all of her emotions, but you can hear her voice. This feels, it's kind of icky to me to have a seven-year-old hauling products. We're not going to talk about all of the, all of my feels <laughs> or thoughts about children influencers in this video. In this video, she hauls a few products. She hauls a Core Organics moisturizer, a cleanser. This is the, oh my gosh, glow recipe. I think she says that. A lip balm with SPF and a blush. So she has four things that she hauls. I am not mad at the child. 
at all. This is not her fault or she wants to be an influencer. Absolutely not. The mom put her on camera and started this whole thing. And what, why I'm bringing this up is because we are indoctrinating children into materialism and material culture and overconsumption at literally six years old. That is not okay. I mean, we're all, like we're giving a job to a child. Also not okay. Like there's no separation from home and work life. It's just, it's, or I, I don't want to get too hung up on that. I need to move on. This is not only a problem for this child in specific, but her capacity to influence other children to shop and to buy these products and also to overconsume and value materialism. And then I'm also thinking about the other children in Gen Alpha who is watching this content potentially who might be trying this product, products that are formulated for adults and recommending them to other children. I have watched other videos from this creator and the mom has said like in the comment, not the comments, the, the caption will say like she, does, she doesn't use all the products being shown, which is also so slimy. Like good for you for protecting your child and not putting skincare that's not meant for her, like on her skin, but also so slimy to push this products to other Gen Alpha who like you're influencing them, you're recommending these products and they could put them on her their skin. Like that seems unethical. The other option is potentially that they're influencing teens and adults and anything that this child puts on her skin will not react the same as a teen or as an adult. So anything she could possibly say about any product is not going to apply to adults. It's only really going to be relevant to other Gen Alpha. Again, like you don't, you don't need, like <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. It's not cute in my opinion to have a child doing an adult's job and to put her in front of a screen to influence people to buy stuff. It's not adorable. Also, just last note before I move on about that core organics product, that product according to the brand itself is for fine lines and wrinkles. Why is a child using a product that is formulated or has the intention of improving fine lines and wrinkles? We're gonna move on. The next one is called Sephora Kid Haul. That's the title of this. And um, I'm gonna describe this as well because I don't know how much is gonna be visible in editing once like all the blurring and stuff is done. Yeah, so it says Sephora Kid Haul, 10 year old Sephora Haul. <sighs> This child is not 10. You can see it when you look at her, you won't be able to see her, but she doesn't look 10. And the mom also says she's six in the video. So this video came out January 6th of this year. And in my opinion, what this video is doing is attempting to capitalize on the Sephora kid craze. I think she's using her daughter in order to capitalize on Sephora kids. We're gonna watch it before I continue on this, on this tangent. Uh, and I'll share my full thoughts then. If you had a choice between two minutes getting anything you wanted or 10 items, which would you choose? Two minutes. Okay, let's go. Go. This was a bit of a social experiment. I wanted to see if she would engage in a veblina scourge and purchase Drunk Elephant and Glow Recipe because of the colorful packaging. Mm. She's only six, so I don't let her watch social media. She does not have her own accounts, and I have no intention to let her be on social media until she's at least 15 or 16. But I was really curious, as a marketing girly, if these kids are flocking towards these specific products in drones because of how they look, or if it's because of cultural influences and the social validation they get from using them. In two minutes, Grace only picked out four products, a Charlotte Tilbury highlighter, NARS lipstick, a lip gloss that smelled like watermelon and something else. And I was a bit disappointed, so I actually let her spend more time shopping. And I was not surprised that she did not gravitate towards the drunk elephant. I actually had to steer her in that direction. We did get a glow recipe moisturizer, but she just wanted face masks and lip gloss. The four items she picked during her two minute shopping spree came to 142.51. Mm -hmm. And then when I let her keep shopping, she spent an additional 248.86. I find this video perhaps maybe even more disturbing than the first one. Okay, we we have we've put a filter on a child to begin with. You can't see it, but 
there is a beauty filter put on a child. This video also has 4.1 million views. So 4.1 million people have viewed a six-year-old child. In my opinion, I find this disturbing because she's, she's put her child in a social experiment that I think the social experiment aspect of this is so BS and it's just a way for her to capitalize on a trend, on on the Sephora kids, which at the time, like everybody was making videos on the Sephora kids and like churning them out. And she so happens to make a video. I, talk, I really want to talk about this social experiment angle because <laughs> I don't, I don't buy it. So this creator has this voiceover that is trying to sound like she's providing intelligent, intellectual, kind of thoughtful commentary. And I think that's what the sound of and like the way that she's speaking, I think that's what she's trying to uh, imply or intend along with, of course, the words that she's using. It's both. And she's saying that she brought her daughter to Sephora for a social experiment. I think it's wild to perform a social experiment on your child. I also don't think you're going to glean anything from this experiment to speak on anything except for maybe something about her child instead of kids more generally, which I think she's trying to imply. She's using the term Veblen-esque gorge. And I'm not trying to sound like an asshole here. I'm making this comment and this critique to talk about why I think this is BS. Okay. So I <laughs> hope you'll bear with me. I believe what she's trying to say is a Veblen-esque good or a Veblen good, because whenever we talk about Veblen, y'all, it's been a hot minute since I've read the theory of leisure class, okay? So I, I could be wrong, but he does not say, to my recollection, Veblen-esque gorge, or he wouldn't say Veblen-esque, he would just say gorge. People, when they are talking about Veblen, they're talking about Veblen goods. And also in the secondary literature, we hear people say, or more like write, Veblen goods. I think she's misusing the term Veblen goods. And I think she's like, maybe heard about it somewhere and is like taking the limited knowledge of what she's heard and is applying it. Veblen goods are goods we're talking about conspicuous consumption and are goods that are symbols of wealth. Here's a screenshot of an article talking about this. Even if I was to give her the benefit of the doubt, which I am, to say that she like misremembered the term or misspoke the term, it happens, and that she actually meant to say Veblen goods, I still believe she's misusing the term. Drunk Elephant is not an example of Veblen goods because of the color. Drunk Elephant would be an example of Veblen goods because of the price point or the brand status. Yes, the symbolic status of the brand itself. And this is further compounded by her attempting to use Veblen goods on a child. Veblen never created his theory to apply to children, and it he has applied it to adults. And I am not a child psychologist and neither is she. And I don't feel comfortable talking about children's shopping habits. Of course, children can be, can be influenced to buy stuff and there can be goods that connotate wealth and status. And it can look differently with children than with adults. But I think it's a little wild to try to suss out babbling goods with kids with like such limited information. I'm, like, if I wanted to suss out Veblen goods and kids, I would go talk to some kids. I will go observe some kids. Not one child in a Sephora store. Like, you have to study an ecosystem in order to get information. Like, is Drunk Elephant a, a Veblen good for six-year-olds? It might be for adults. I don't know for six-year-olds. Maybe ten-year-olds. In the wake of the Sephora kids, it might be interesting to talk about the role of, con of conspicuous consumption among children, but this is not the way to do it. If there was a display of conspicuous consumption displayed in this video, it would be on the part of the mom <laughs> and allowing her child to spend whatever she wanted in Sephora. That's the display of conspicuous consumption, in my opinion. I mention all of this to say that I don't think this is about a child's conspicuous consumption. I think this is about a mom capitalizing on the Sephora kid trend and trying to get her video into the algorithm. 
which she was very successful on. I'm trying to be kind here. Um, I think the mom very much wants to get into the algorithm and has made some videos in response to lots of comments on this video. To, I feel like to stay relevant. Now, some of the other comments people have left are about buying makeup for children. And I think your opinion on whether or not a mom should buy a makeup for a child, let alone expensive makeup for a child, I think it, class is going to play a lot into it. I'm not somebody who's grown up with wealth or trust fund or somebody who's just had thousands of dollars or millions of dollars at disposal, at a disposal. And so I understand even if I disagree with really wealthy people letting their children buy summer Fridays. And so that is part of like why people are getting like somewhat upset. Like it's crazy to let a child buy summer Fridays or buy Sephora makeup because also many people can't afford to buy Sephora makeup and they're adults and people are like, this is such nice stuff for kids. And I kind of agree, but I also don't have money. Like, you know, <laughs> what I do disagree with is people saying that like kids shouldn't play with makeup. And I think that um, a lot of kids, a lot of children grow up wanting to play with makeup and the mom indulging the the daughter in like allowing her to play with makeup, I don't think is a bad thing. Yeah, so I don't have a problem conceptually with a mom letting her child play with makeup. I do think though that how this looks for a lot of children are moms giving their children um, makeup that maybe doesn't suit their skin tone, makeup that they don't really like anymore or is not as relevant to them. Uh, and then they're like, hey, you can play with this, go at it. And then I think that's often uh, what happens. And I just think it's less normal to see moms uh, buying their children $50 lipsticks. Okay, I had one more video I was going to talk about, but we just do not have time today. We are currently over an hour. Um, we'll be lucky to cut this down to 40 minutes. So I'll save this for another time. And I think that there's a a discussion as well about having teenagers be influencers online. Yeah, because uh, the last video is from a 15 year old, sorry, a 16 year old who uh, is an influencer with millions of TikTokers. This perhaps is a video for another day. So we're going to call it there. And I would really love to hear from you and all of your thoughts on all of these TikToks that I showed today. So thanks so much for watching, hanging out, and I hope to see you again around here soon.